Moment. Not much. Um, hanging out, you know, Skynet League finals. It's awesome. Uh, Dignitas playing really, really good, extremely well, making very tiny few mistakes, and Panzer not playing the same, uh, making mistakes and getting slightly outpicked, so that's why they got stomped last game. Can't lose those. Um, yeah, I would agree. And that, that is very much saying something. Panzer is very good. Um, you know, they would stomp pretty much anybody else, but not the top, not most of the top teams. Um, you know, I'd say Panzer's kind of looking like a B team right now compared to Dignitas, who is definitely inching towards that A team, if not already very close. Mm hmm. And he's going to be first picked immediately, fits into so many different lane setups. Um, you know, you can't solo him on the long hard lanes, which is generally a little tougher to do, but most likely we're going to see him soloing the mid lane. I would love to see, god, I don't even know who's going to play him. Uh, Kroki played a good Zeus last game. Not extremely creative, but you can always, he's, I, I meant uh, Zeus is not a very creative possibility hero uh, compared to somebody like Invoker. And I'm interested to see what a skill build is going to be, but most likely we're going to see a Quas and uh, a Wex build going for that EMP Tornado. Which is just so good. And, and Invoker's actually a pretty good hero against Omni Knight as well because, you know, if you can land that EMP on him, I don't care if he has Arcane oh, Boots and Sil Ring, you're going to lower his mana down and that's going to be a pain in the butt for him. And there's the magic hero that's still in the pool. It is Anti-Mage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. He is Invoker is moderately good against Anti Mage. It's not just the EMP though. I mean, Invoker has so many spells. EMP Tornado is part of it. Drain is mana. He can't blink anymore, and that's the main problem with Anti Mage surviving. Other than that, late game you're gonna have a Deafening Blast, and if you have a high level of Wex and Quas, not only does it knock him back for a second and a half or something, it also makes it so he can't attack you for like four seconds, which is obviously a really big deal. Cold Snap is good as well. You know, it's just. There's a lot of options to keep Anti-Mage busy or keep him not attacking you. As apparently my mic was off this entire time for this game too, so my apologies. <laughs> my name is Sunshine <laughs> Journey. How's it going, guys? Um, but yeah, that is interesting to see the fact that Anti-Mage isn't picked first, though. But of course with Invoker. I mean, Invoker is <laughs> kind of like one of those counters to literally every single hero in the game in one way or another, depending on how you build them, of course. But it looks yeah, like the true. first round of picks are going to be Rasta, Anti-Mage, and Lich, who has dropped off the scene completely for some reason. I have no idea why, because he's amazing. Well, it, it's because the pushing is more popular right now. It's all about pushing. Hard carries are not played much. Usually we just see, we see Anti-Mage banned, and then both teams are like, you know what, not getting a hard carry. I'm going to play Dragon Knights. I'm going to play... Like Night Stalkers, I don't want to get a really, really hard carry because they're scared about getting pushed down. And that's why Lich doesn't see play then. Lich was top banned pick because of the hard carries being popular. And all of a sudden when people stop picking the hard carries, and then it's not worth picking Lich because the sacrifice is not as usable. You can't push or counter push with Lich. It just comes down to Lich being, you know, his good abilities are sacrifice and his ulti. His ulti is always going to be useful no matter what the metagame is, but if he can't push and he's not shutting down a hard carry, there's no point picking him. So in yeah, this case, actually, we have two yeah. hard carries. So that's why he's in the game. Yep. So game of old here. But yeah, that's actually a really good point. I was going to say he's really good in the side solo, Lich is, but of course that's going to help the opposing team push a little bit if they want to do so, and we've been seeing that a lot more lately. But it looks like it might be going back to the, the old metagame of, of old. The old metagame of old. That, that definitely... I mean, good statement right there, I must say. But yeah, Rasta, Anti-Mage, Lich, and the other side, Invoker, Venomancer, and Void. So just off the top of my head, I would say 
a void with uh, a Chronosphere and EMP on top of that. And Ooh. Invoker doesn't necessarily have to go for Tornado in that in that case. Maybe going for a Cold Snap or something to that degree, which is amazing <laughs> against pretty much anybody. But of course, an Anti Mage can prevent him from blinking out for quite a bit of time as well, along with that EMP, of course. So that's pretty dirty combination. Yeah, it definitely is. Invoker is just such a pain in the ass to fight against. And if we look at the bands now, it's kind of reflecting what we were seeing for the metagame in the last the month or two previous, is that we're seeing those team fight support heroes getting banned. Enigma gets banned, Tidehunter gets banned, Eventual Spirit getting banned, and then finally a Windrunner from Dignitas. So it's like they're all completely adjusting their uh, picks and bands to the metagame currently. Since they both have already picked hard carries, um, it's it kind of like changes the whole gaming setup. I don't know if maybe it would have been better for the Radiant team to just not pick Faceless Void until the second round so that they could bait out those uh, pushing bands from Dignitas while still going for their hard carry roles. But um, this is the way that they went to go for it, and uh, we're going to need to see some support heroes out of both teams. Uh, there is that fact that you can pick Void last because you know they're not going to pick him, but Dignitas could have banned him as well because that's one of the that's few possible, heroes yes. that can just destroy an anti mage. As we're going to see an Earthshaker. So this is really old school. I haven't seen Earthshaker in quite a while. Uh, obviously good against any pushing. And there is the Darkseer. I was wondering, last game, of course we talked about it, Darkseer mm -hmm. is broken if you get Aghanim Scepter against any kind of push lineup. Of course, this isn't necessarily a push, but of course, any time Void goes through that, that's going to be pretty hard to take down, obviously. Or even Anti-Mage going through your own Darkseer wall. Yeah, if he true. does have that Aghanim Scepter, there's another Mana Burner, man. Just put that on the Earthshaker, <laughs> yeah. and Earthshaker hates his life because <laughs> he's not going to be able to kill that illusion very easily. Doesn't want to waste Fissures on that or something like that. So, um, Radiant team going to be looking for one more solo hero. Invoker will solo one of their lanes. They might put somebody top, maybe like a Puck or a Clockwork or something like that. I'd be surprised about Clockwork, but um, they need somebody to solo their top lane. It might be Invoker, which means they might put a solo mid somewhere. Maybe like a Beastmaster, I think would be really smart. Beastmaster is pretty good against Anti Mage because of that roar. Puts them in place for so long. Um, but not really sure. I'm not. I'm not completely sure. I would guess Beastmaster, but other than Beastmaster, I don't really know. The last time I saw Clockwork was. Panzer picking up Clockwork, actually. Mm. Um, but I, I don't... I mean, yeah, their lineups, there's quite a few ways they can go. I mean, the the, the, the Void with a Venomancer, I'm assuming. And the question is, are they going to actually do a dual lane or anything like that, or end up doing a tri lane as they pick up AA? So Smart. that's another hero that was banned last game, I believe, and that's a mm -hmm. very strong hero with initiation. I mean, Ice Blast plus Chronosphere plus Veno Ult plus Earthshaker Ult plus Invoker, anything he has, including EMP. That's a lot of AoE coming out here for, for yeah. Panzer. It's a ton of team fight, and that's what's really awesome. I'm not really sure whether they're probably going to sold their Ancient Apparition, though uh, an AA and an Earthshaker combo is very good for a tri lane. They may be defending the Void, but I'd be a little surprised. Um, it's possible we might see like uh, maybe Venomancer soloing the top lane, put Invoker mid, do a Earthshaker, Void bottom, or it, they have a couple different options. But I'm generally expecting them to do the Ancient Apparition in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. In terms of Dignitas, um, Darkseer is going to be their solo bot, most likely. Uh, Lich probably, you know, it, it's the Lich is probably going to be bottom. Lich, they're going to try to put the Lich wherever the void is, of course. Um, so that might put their Darkseer in the jungle or top. Uh, not really sure. They could put Darkseer a couple different places. They they actually have a lot more flexibility in lane. Yeah, and I think. definitely. And I mean, I, like you were talking about, I don't know. I, I do expect Lich to go with anti mage as well. But Darkseer we see a lot in the solo side because he has so much escapability with well his innate tankiness, but. Also, his Surge, which gives him max speed, which is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Windrunner, but obviously you're not going to get any evasion or anything like that. But I just want to bring out the combination is Lion's going to be picked up. So some heroes that we haven't seen in quite a while, at least I haven't. Uh, Lion, obviously very versatile, can do pretty much anything. But uh, I kind of miss the solo Lion, to be honest. But pretty sure we're not going to see that here, as it's most likely going to be a tri lane of sorts with Rasta mid and Darkseer on the bottom lane with that tri lane. Would you agree with that? Um... It's possible. I, I would love to see a solo line. I don't think we'll see. We'll probably see Rost over line, but um, it, it kind of comes down to what they want to do. If they're more concerned about pushing, which I don't think they are, they could solo the Rasta. If they're more concerned about killing or ganking, I think line would be a better solo in yeah. this case, because they might be wanting to kill the Faceless Void, and or the Invoker. Having an extra, having an early finger of death coming from line, that's a 500 damage nuke with the dust on Invoker, you know, that could definitely make the difference between getting a kill. Look and at, I think that's going to kind of come down to what they want to do here. Look at Lion's Gullet. I never noticed how huge it was. Oh, look at that thing. Does that look Lion's like a normal neck to you? As we... Well, he's not really a normal looking man, but... Uh, yeah. you remember the original look that he had? I hated, I hated Lion. It was, it, he and brought a new, you know, new fad of Down Syndrome-ness to, to Dota 2, no doubt about it, so... He yeah, has been tweaked a little bit, though. <laughs> yeah, he definitely looks retarded. But anyway, 
Uh, going on with the lineups here, we have Alex playing the Venomancer, who unfortunately this in this series has not played the aforementioned Tidehunter because of perhaps past failings. Uh, Leaf is going to be playing the Faceless Void. Kuroki, a.k.a. Kurakai, or whatever in God's name, Invoker, like you were talking about. Earthshaker is being played by Pass, Pass, whatever, Ancient Apparition. And it, by the way, if you, any of these players end up watching these games and want me to pronounce their names a specific way, I'm all ears. Like, I have no idea. And Saga is going to be played by, or going to be playing Ancient Apparition. All right, for the Dire Team Dignitas on the mid lane, looks like we have uh, Zizu playing the Lich. Um, next to him is Sony Ace playing the Shadow Shaman on the bot lane. Lion is going to be playing the Darkseer. And on the top lane, we have Freezer playing the Antimage being supported by a by Come With Me playing the Lion. Looks like he's going to be doing the pulling uh, this game. And we have more wards placed in the inside of the trees. I like what Earthshaker did here. Drop the ward in to hopefully prevent the counter pulling and then put another one up on the high ground, which the Dire Team was aware of. And if you look at Kuroki's starting items, he actually has a crap load, a literal crap load of regen. And I'm kind of surprised he's not top. Maybe we're just going to see like a weird tri lane going on. Maybe they're just going to let the top lane farm. I feel like that would be a huge mistake, but... And there's the counter warding coming from Come With Me. He doesn't even have to like know that they're... He's not even going to wait for the pulse spine. He's going to try to scout out that ward, but I don't know if he's going to be able to find it. Ooh, yeah, that's going to be close. He's going to... Actually, it's being pinged, but nothing's going to come of it, doesn't look like. So, that is going to be blocked, no doubt about it. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be Invoker mid versus a Rasta, and that's going to be pretty hard for Rasta here as an Earthshaker and Ancient Apparition, who are going to be spotted here, mind you, are going to attempt to gank mid, but Rasta is, of course, aware of this. Lich did sacrifice a creep in mid to help out the cause for, for Rasta here. Rasta is definitely aware of this, so he better be careful. And one Fissure, and it's game over for you, good sir. We're going to see a first blood on Darks here in the bot lane, though. Whoop. Good thing I caught the tail end of that one. Holy crap. Yes. How is that even possible? Look at Dark Seer's uh, skill build. Oh my. Why? Why? Picks up Iron Shell first. No Surge, which means if he got Gale there, which yeah. I assume he did because Alex is missing mana, then we see a uh, Time Walk from Leaf and a couple hits. And he goes down. I don't know if Bashes came in or not. Faceless Void does have a Time Lock skill. But that's that's a big loss there. And was that Void getting the last hit too? No, it was, it was the Venomancer. But even still. Some some would argue that the support getting the first blood actually is a little bit more beneficial to be honest, but obviously that's back and forth. Pinions aside. Yeah, I would agree here. with that. I think that's that's definitely a very good point. Immediately get the courier, have your next set of wards <coughs> ready to go, something like that. But it looks like actually Lich is gonna be here to support the Dark Seer, at least to sacrifice. So interesting changes here being made. Uh, but yeah, that not getting first level of surge, that is a big fail in my opinion at least. Um, but that's exactly the kind of thing that Panzer needs to to actually compete because the last three games that I've cast like I've talked about ad nauseum here they have not even competed with Dignitas which is truly unfortunate considering this is the grand finals but I'm just more pumped up to see an invoker because obviously it's somewhat new here to the field I think it's been like a week since it's been implemented to the tournament mode mm -hmm. and very fun hero to watch obviously have you watched a pro player play invoker yet yes okay and it's yeah, kind of funny because it's kind of played a lot of the way. I mean, obviously they're better, but the pub build is pretty much the same as competitive build at this point. I mean, yeah. Tornado EMP is basically like the best combination in the entire game, basically. So Yeah, it really is. And they always get phase boots, usually get a drum of endurance. And from there, there's like only a couple options. I saw an Orchid earlier today, and that was used against a Queen of Pain. But um, generally see like either a, a Sheep Stick or a, a Yule Scepter or an, you know, or a Negative Scepter, something like that. Yeah, Yule Scepter, definitely I've seen that a few times here. Uh, I mean, what do you think about the lane setups right now? We have basically Void, Venomancer, versus Darkseer, Lich, which obviously started off very, very fast here for the Void and Venomancer getting that first blood onto, onto Darkseer. Uh, I mean, what do you think about the bottom lane in general? Um, I think bottom lane is looking good for Leaf and the uh, Venomancer. The only downside is Leaf ended up picking up a couple levels of Time Walk early, or Time Lock early to be aggressive because he thought he was against the solo Darkseer. Now Lich has shown up, so I think this is smart laning for the Dire team. Uh, but Venomancer does have a lot of support possibilities. I actually really love the top lane, the Earthshaker Ancient Apparition dual lane. Ancient Apparition is going to get uh, free farm this way. Well, not necessarily free farm, but he will get farm this way. And it looks like the counter ward did actually go through by the line, so that's a big deal. So line will be able to do solo pulling. But, you know, they have an Ancient Apparition and Earthshaker to shut that down. Darkseer gets a kill on the Venomancer on the bottom wow, lane. Wow, I'm missing kills up. all over the place. My apologies. I missed them too, it's okay. 
But yeah, I mean that that's actually pretty crazy. But it is on a Venomancer, so not the biggest deal. Considering the Void's gonna get a little bit solo XP as a result, so maybe not the best thing actually if you think about it, depending on your perspective. Because they're not gonna be able to force him off the lane here. Doesn't look like. But uh, what do you expect the build to be from Darkseid? Is he gonna up Ion Shell and perhaps push the lane a little bit and provide a little bit of harassment? Uh, probably gonna pick up a fast Soul Ring. Is very is very very good on Darkseid. I would say almost mandatory. People that don't get Soul Rings on Darkseid are just asking to run out of mana. Mm -hmm. And uh, either a pipe or a Vanguard. In this game, I'm gonna probably say he's gonna get the pipe for his team um, and uh, give the mech to a uh, Lich, probably. Something like that would be my guess. And I think that would be a very smart item build for uh, the Darkseer. Yeah, pipe would definitely be very, very good this game. Obviously, the, the Ancient Apparition, I'm not gonna say it completely counters it, but something like a mechanism, may, maybe not the most prevalent if you get a good ultimate from Ancient Apparition, but you can't really mm -hmm. expect that to be the case. Uh, but with all the <laughs> team fight we've been talking about, which you've yet to see, obviously, since they're only level 3s here, uh, it's going to be crazy to see what's going to happen here. But Anti-Mage, basically, for all intents and purposes here at top, is essentially soloing with Lion pulling to his heart's content. So he's going to be getting levels, maybe not the best farm, as it looks like Earthshaker and AA are aware of this, this pull going on here. And are going to attempt to do something about it, just going to get a little bit far in the meantime. But, I mean, this top lane for Anti-Mage, from his perspective, how do you feel like that's going to go? Well, he's definitely getting a really good farm. He's getting closer and closer to his Vanguard, uh, or his Battle Fury, uh, either way. Uh, probably, I think it would, might actually be smart for him to get a Vanguard this game, because of the Void. Uh, if he does use that ultimate, you know, he's going to get hit for 5 or 4 seconds or whatever, and that's going to be quite dangerous. The only downside is his Battle Fury is going to be pushed off later this way, but I think it might be a better decision for him to get that. Uh, especially because then, at that point, he's not really going to have to worry about dying to Ancient Apparition and or Shaker. Yep. And I think something to bring up here is the fact that if you do, like, a lot of people think that you need to get a Battle Fury first to match somebody like a Void, but I think once you get the Battle Fury on Anti Mage, I think you take off to a higher degree than somebody like Void. It's not like Void can just leap to creeps consistently, <laughs> like Anti Mage can just blink to neutral creep, mm -hmm. neutral camps, just take them out real quickly. So it's, I think the as far as farming taking off, Anti Mage definitely takes off to a higher degree. So. I would definitely agree that the, uh, as we can see, a little bit of action here. Rasta Wars coming up here. Nice wall from Earthshaker is going to at least save Ancient Apparition for now, but looks like Anti Mage really wants none of this. So he's going he's gonna to get the kill on a and, uh, AA and apply a little bit of pressure to Earthshaker as well. So it doesn't end up actually doing anything in the end uh, as far as the wall. But very nice placement on the wards, I must say. Not only to get enough damage to help get the kill on AA, but enough to take down this tier 1 tower, looks like as well. Yeah, there really was a great fissure from the Earthshaker. I thought that was going to save him, but Anti-Mage does have uh, three levels <coughs> of mana breaks, so um, draining a lot of mana there, hitting really, really hard, and he was able to pick him off. At that point, the downside is that they don't have any hard disables. Uh, you know, you need the Cold Feet to go off for Ancient Apparition to start Anti-Mage from getting a kill, and that's not easy to do. Earthshaker already fissured, so at that point he was dead. And they pick off the, the EC Tower on the top lane, which is, you know, that's what uh, Shadow, Shadow Shaman's for. Now the question is, do they put Void at top to get free farm? Now that lane's pushed is the question. Or actually, looks like Dignitas is sticking around with the smoke here. Perhaps going to be ganking this Ancient Apparition and Earthshaker. Are they going to be able to do enough damage here? Looks like Lion's going to try to get a stun, but not going to be close enough, I do believe, as the Cold Feast is going to be applied to him. He's going to have to back that horse up. But I think Void coming top would be a really good idea. Although he is getting good farm bottom, so it's not like he really needs to, I guess. Yeah, exactly. If he can just sit bottom, absolutely fine. Uh, that's good for him. He's going to get farm. He's going to Chrome Sphere on the bot lane, though. On the Darkseer, there's a Gale going down as well, but Gale is not going to stop Surge, and he's going to be absolutely fine. Man, he moved fast. <laughs> really far with that one level of Surge. But, I mean, the, the best thing that the Radiant team could do right now, I think, is just control this lane. Try to keep the Anti-Mage really close to their base, and then from there, um, that's going to force probably Line to go back and pull, and for a while, their Anti-Mage is going to have to be have to worry about dying. And he is going to pick up a Vanguard. A uh, very smart item build here, there you go. I think, this game. Actually, he's actually adjusting it based on the hero he's fighting. Yep. And I, I do like that, the fact that you're actually... And this is what we... <laughs> not to bring up pubs again, but we see the discrepancy between pub players and competitive players. You don't always go for the same build. You, you have to base it off what you're actually going against. Shadow Shaman is going to place his wards, but the cold snap being placed onto him. Is it going to be enough to get the kill? But the ward trap is, looks like it's going to get the kill on Invoker one way or another. Nice shackle on Earthshaker to hold him just for a little bit. His Lich is going to come into the fray. Earthshaker is not able to catch up, and I do believe there's the last hit from Lich, who is now level 6, by the way. And perhaps we're going to see some more fights here. A very nice play from Rasta getting out of that alive. That was really close. If Rasta went to ward trap the Invoker, he would have died there. And, and not to mention the fact that 
as soon as the tornado finished, he dropped those wards immediately. He knew that something was about to happen. If he went to drop the wards, as he got stunned by Earthshaker, it would have been just over. And Venomancer going to get stunned wow. and probably going to get picked up as well. A couple auto attacks. No, he's actually going to juke into the jungle. Ward trap him. Or tra yes! Oh. Yes, he did it. He dropped the ward down. That kept him alive. Seriously, if you guys never do that, it's so good. Venomancer blocking ward spots like that, now chasing after the line. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a stun from Earthshaker. He's just a little bit too far away, but we'll see. Yeah, they're going to try to chase down this lion. Oh, lion stutter steps a little bit. He's going to go into the jungle, actually. He's going to get stunned. There's the gale. Questionable. Oh, oh nice. Oh. Ward trap again. Oh Cock blocking in between the fissure itself as Ancient Apparition is going to get the kill there. Meanwhile, at bottom, a little bit of pressure being applied to Void, but I do believe he does have a leap. But he's level 1, so he actually better be careful here. He's going to get completely blocked here. And he's going to use his ultimate to try to get the kill on Dark Seer, and that might be exactly what he needs to do. Couple more hits to go. Actually, Earthshaker is going to help him out there as he gets actually his last hit on Darkseer. And now Shadow Shaman is in a lot of trouble. So this is turning into as actually he gets the kill on Venomaster, but of course will die in the end. Unfortunately, Earthshaker gets both those kills, but I think the first one was definitely needed as now Lion here is to support, but nothing yeah. he can do, obviously. I think that was really smart. He stunned the Shadow Shaman and killed the Darkseer. Darkseer could have gotten a couple more hits off in the Void, which would have made it a little dangerous. Um, I think Venomancer misplayed a little bit. Uh, you know, he knew it's a Rasta. He could have checked his mana. It's like Rasta probably has Aethershock maxed out. And I'm at half HP, and he gave Rasta a kill there. Um, but it's still a one for two trade. Uh, so I guess he doesn't have to feel too bad about it. But I think he could have been a little bit less aggressive. And maybe had Shadow Shaman not get a killer. And that's the first time we've seen Kurakai be involved in some sort of team fight that didn't involve his imminent death. And he used that amazing tornado ability, which is just. What's the range? Is it 3,000 or something like 3,100, uh, is it? It depends on how many Wex you have. Well, like the max, I guess. Uh, 3,200 range. <laughs> and that's insane. Like, seriously, that is insane. Ugh. So yeah, it's really far. It's I've seen probably the most frustrating here to yeah. go against. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to make a Rage comic about it, kind of. Like, I, I love playing <laughs> yeah. him so much. But whenever I play against him, I just feel like I want them to apologize for playing Invoker. Because <laughs> it's like, God, I have to deal with this crap. It's EMP tornado. All right, we need three arcane boots. We need a mechanism, and then we can fight. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's the only true. way to do it. I was looking at the as we have a pause here. Obviously, if you guys haven't noticed that the thing says game is paused, um, the gold lead right now is actually in the favor of the dire at twenty five hundred at this point. So although the kills <laughs> are pretty even, a decent gold lead at this stage of the game for Dignitas, who I wasn't even going to say had the huge lead here by any means. So. Pans are definitely not out of it yet. I, I seem so pessimistic, but every game against Dignitas, Pans are just dropped the ball horribly. So, doing a little bit better this time, though, so it's good to see. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Anti-Mage, that's the important man, the, the Anti-Mage versus Void. Anti-Mage has a couple, uh, about 200 gold, more than the Faceless Void, very close. So, Anti-Mage should pick up the Vanguard first. Void, I would like to see go maybe poor man's into a battle fury. I think that would be a better way for him to spend his gold since he has a natural survivability of backtrack. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to actually be able to do decent damage to the anti-mage when the team fights come. We'll see if he maybe gets a mask of madness, but with this many disablers, I'm going to say get a black king bar first. So maybe like maybe like a battle fury into Yasha black king bar. That that's I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe just mask of madness black king bar. I think a lot of it's going to hinge on how well this void is farmed. If he can keep his farm up it's going to be a whole different thing. He needs to be able to kill that anti-mage in the team fights. Yep, that's definitely true. And uh, I mean, the anti-mage, like we've talked about, went the vanguard. Um, doesn't have to necessarily go for that that battle fear right. But I think, like you just said, Void does kind of need to go for the battle fear right away just to be able to compete with somebody like an anti-mage once he does pick that up. So mm -hmm. it's going to give him a little bit of earlier uh, farm advantage as far as that's concerned. Ant anti-mage would eventually catch up, but as far as one v one, I do like Void more. As far as them going head to head, especially if he has like something like a Manta or something like that, but overall, I mean, Anti Mage is gonna be really tough to bring down. And both heroes are farming relatively well at this point. Actually, let's look at the actual farm at this point of the game. Although it's pretty early, 309 gold per minute on the Faceless Void, which is very respectable, followed by 331 on Anti Mage. So pretty even overall. Although you have a Rasta who's at 324, and no one really else competing on the other side of the coin. So. Yeah, Kroki is actually not that amazingly high with his uh, gold yeah. per minute here. How is how does he have for last hits? He only had 200 gold per minute. He's at 37 last hits. It's not that bad, um, but he has not gotten kills like uh, Shadow Shaman has, and he's died once. So only one assist for him. He's level seven. Um, could be a little bit higher. The levels are a little bit more generous for the dire team, 
just slightly. Uh, but yeah, it's their farm numbers. Their farm numbers are just a little bit better. Their top lane didn't do nearly as well as the Dire Bottom did, I think. And I think this is getting close to the time where Invoker starts to become ridiculous. Uh, I mean, would you say mm -hmm. his, his main advantage is going to be in the late early stages to the to entire mid game is where his biggest strengths are going to lie? Pro probably the mid to late game is where Invoker is the strongest. He can do stuff early though, like Tornado and Cold Snap. You can make kills happen and good team fight skirmishes. But once he gets maximum levels of Wex and gets a couple, like maybe one more into Quas and then maybe picks up a level of Extort, you know, that's when things get really, really dangerous for the Dire team. Unless they all pick up Black King bars, I'm going to expect to see one on Shadow Shaman, maybe even one online in the mid game as well. Uh, Anti Mage, I don't know if he's going to have to get one or not, but the AoE disables are going to fly. And uh, that's when you got to worry. Hey, are so you able to actually type more than one line now while it's paused? Uh, I don't believe so. Oh, that was before the pause, I guess. Choose wisely. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't understand why they haven't put in, well, first and foremost, that bug getting fixed. And secondly, um, like when you pause, why does it need to be instantaneous? <laughs> like why can't there be like a three-second lag time to at least prepare yourself? That's kind I of don't know. I, they, haven't done that. they, you know, I, I apparently pausing in... Uh, um, Steam games is something that just was never integrated, I guess. Some, there's some weird like mechanics issue with it. So um, just the fact that we can pause it all is a nice advantage. Well, actually, over now that you bring that up, uh, since I was a Counter-Strike player, there was a way to pause, but it's actually very similar to this. It would be instantaneous. So hmm. I guess the, I guess that does come into play a little bit. I didn't really think about that. but yeah, I'm sure they'll get to it. Pause. I guess I'd rather have more heroes right now than uh, nice, awesome features like that, which I'm sure they'll get to. It's just, you know, they have a lot of stuff to do uh, to improve the game, so. True enough, true enough. Actually, does the ping thing work? I don't think it does. For us? Oh, there we go. It actually works in, uh, in console. I didn't know that. Okay. What did you try typing? Uh, just ping in console. Looks like I have 220 ping. Excellent. Alex has oh, yeah, 240. Okay, so I take everything back I said about you, Alex. If you've had that <laughs> ping the entire time with a with, uh, horrible Tidehunter play, then I, I'll give you a free pass. What's the uh, ping for everybody else? Aren't they playing on your server or something like that? Mm, I think, yeah, it must be Euro server. But, yeah, everybody, most people are under 100. I guess, yeah, you're actually at 186. I, probably low priority for spectators, obviously. Yeah, everybody's at relatively even ping overall, other than other than Alex is getting raped. Is it normally that high though? Uh, is I the real question. Honestly, don't know. I mean, when I like, what's the lowest ping you get when you play? It's my question. I have actually, I never have console enabled, so I never check. Uh, cause that's that's what I was asking you actually. It's gonna seem kind of picky for me to say this, but the high, the, the lowest that I get on any server is like 85, which isn't actually very good. Um, as far as playability, it's perfectly fine. Like I have no problem with it, but. Uh, the fact that there's no, like, I'm in Arizona, so there's no LA servers. I know that for a fact. Like, the only West servers that, well, I don't know if they're the only ones, but I assume the only ones are Seattle, which is where Valve is headquartered. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of weird that they don't have any LA servers yet. But, of course, that's something that's going to be fixed. And, obviously, I did make a video way back when on the <laughs> unit response delay that got a lot of controversy controversy around it, surrounding it. Uh, it's been fixed for the most part. The only thing is really the ping that bothers me which is definitely playable, so it's not that big of a deal at the moment. Yeah, I honestly never notice any delay when I play U.S. servers. It's it's completely normal for me, all the response times and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, like, east and west, like, I'm in Arizona, so this is, like, the bottom left corner. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I obviously know, but a lot of the years on the bottom left corner of the U.S. So east is way farther than me, but I get the same ping to west that I do the east. So a mm. little bit of work to be done as far as the servers are concerned, but I'm sure that has just to do with location. And obviously not of the highest importance as long as people... Well, that's another thing, though, is I think there was a whole new batch of people that got invites the other day. So yeah, you're ex I'm expecting some new servers to be implemented in different locations at some point. I believe they doubled their servers two weeks ago, three weeks ago. There's usually a Reddit post somebody monitors. Oh, really? <laughs> There's some website that monitors servers, and they, they're like, oh, look, Valve has twice as many servers as they did a week ago. And then you can say, oh, they're obviously going to do beta invites in a week or two, and then that happened again. So That's pretty cool. If you just watch Reddit, man, every time that they the one guy posts, he's like, dude, there's a thousand new servers or something. And then it, you, you just know, wait a week, be patient, guys. Then you can get more beta keys. I think they're, I don't know if they're giving out friend invites again or not, but I hope they are. 
Yeah, I hope so too. Some more Brady Honestly, Kiesel flow. I, I feel like the open beta realm is approaching pretty shortly, as in the next couple months. I don't. I know for a fact. Well, Twelve hours from now. <laughs> yes, yeah, not not quite that short, but I think a lot of people have a misconception that they're not gonna release it to the public until all the heroes are implemented. I think that's kind of crazy. Like, there's no way that they do that because that's gonna be like eight months, ten months down the road here. So there's no way that they're going to wait that long. I mean, it might be in beta that long, sure, mm. but open beta is a different, whole different ball game. Yeah, I never thought about that fact. The uh, the idea that they could do the game mostly released, but not all the heroes be in it. I, you know, I really wouldn't care that much. I would be like, look, like, I mean, the game might as well be brand new, as far as I'm concerned. Like the playability, yeah, the heroes aren't in there, not all the heroes, but if you have like 60% of the hero pool. You can play games of Dota, no problem. And you can play it all day long and enjoy the crap out of it. So I, I, I would agree. I would rather have them just have the game out earlier than have the complete hero pool, as long as they're going to do it eventually, which I know they will. Now, I don't think we were on stream when, you were, when we were talking about this, but since we're paused and we have nothing else to talk about, might as well bring it up. What heroes are you looking forward to uh, the Let most? Let me tab on back <laughs> to my yes. post that I made on Reddit. Um, this is what I want. God damn it, Valve. You better do this tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> or today, for that matter. Or today. I would love this. All right, so I looked through the entire Play Dota Heroes tab, and I wrote down all the heroes that I really want to play. And I said Ogre Magi, Panda. Those are my first two picks. And by the way, you talked a little shit about Ogre Magi, but... <laughs> yes, I did. There, I think there needs to be more viable supports in the game. And Ogre Magi does occasionally see play, because he does a stun and a slow at level 2, which is... A lot of disable for a support hero. So you can see him as a roaming. He will be picked up in pro games, I guarantee it, occasionally. Um, and the, I, I personally like playing him. I don't know why. Um, he's really fun solo with Blink oh, Dagger. Don't get me and, wrong. And I, I, like I like playing him back in the day as well. I just hate... I mean, coming from me, like if you knew me a little bit better, I think you'd understand because I have the worst luck about everything. Like small things that don't matter, I have the worst possible luck. It's like I was... A rapist in my past life, so my karma this in this life is just awful. So, I never get multicast. Basically, is what I'm trying to come down to here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't like it. You're not casting enough fire blasts, obviously. That's yeah, your problem apparently. There. You're probably casting like five fire blasts, and you get like one multicast. Well, Have you honestly, played, when's yeah. the last time you played him, though? Ooh. Well, I hate to bring it up, but he's in the other game I used to play. So if that oh. counts, but I mean, I haven't played Dota one in like four, uh, three years probably. So. Well, I, I know he, he got modified a little bit to have more multicast. If I uh, pull him up here on Play Dota. Um, I remember back in the day where Aghanim Scepter actually worked on him. Well, he doesn't have an Aghanim Scepter anymore, so it's basically been buffed. That's true. At least to cast more often. So at level. Alright, so level 3 multicast, he has a 50% chance to cast twice, which is pretty high. 25% chance to cast three times, and a 12.5% chance to cast four times. That's a crap load of damage, because. If you get the multicast, which I don't. Never, of course. Never. You, you never get it. And I'm sure that's not just like you misidentifying mis how often you get it. Oh, it's definitely not. Not exaggerated okay. whatsoever. But <laughs> I must say, you're the panda, I definitely agree with. Although he unfortunately will not be a panda in Dota 2, which is makes me cry like, well, a panda. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know about that, right? And actually, I should just bring it for everybody else in case they don't know. But basically, uh, since this game will be... I don't even know if it's going to be sold. It might be a free-to-play, but whatever the case may be, they're catering it a little bit towards Chinese players as well, obviously because of the competitive scene. I think scene. that would be smart, yes. <laughs> uh, they're not really... Apparently, having pandas in a game... Like, What's the best way to put this? You can't physically hurt pandas in Chinese culture. It's considered an insult to have a panda in a game, I guess is the best way to put it. I don't know. To take physical damage. <laughs> to have violence <laughs> yes. on pandas. Yeah, I believe that's pretty, what it is. There you go. So, but they did it for World of Warcraft, so I don't know. We'll see. So, yeah, that's true. But, uh, yeah, if, if he doesn't end up... I mean, I expect him to be at least a drunken monk of some sort. But that hero was freaking mm -hmm. awesome. I love him. Any strength hero, I'm fine with. Pitlord, yeah, Dirge, all Pit of Lord them are good to man. go. Every like, time I play Pitlord, I always like, all chat, Pitlord is OP as soon as I get in. Because <laughs> he's not, but... He's I don't so know. I fun. just love like trolling, trolling with Pitlord for some. Although reason. I, I never played him when he they changed the. Uh, I never got to play him when they changed it quite a bit. Yeah, it's a so. really. It was super Imba for a while. Because it, it, it was, used to be gar like they used to be the most bad. garbage spell ever. So is it good now? Uh, it could arguably good late game, but it was 
bad before that. It it used to be it was really imbo when they first made it. It was like a hundred mana or something, one hundred twenty five mana. The cooldown was like ten seconds or something. So it was really cheap on mana cost. You'd get a soul ring, and you'd do pit of malice, which is the graveyard thing, yeah. and it would immobilize, and that would make um, corpses for you. So you could like soul ring, pit, and expulsion, uh. and heal up everything while doing obscene amounts of AOE. Was damage. the the corpse in, like uh, the pit or whatever? Did that always include corpses? I don't remember that. No, just when this just with this edition. Okay, so that makes okay that makes it a little bit better. Then. So it'd do like a crap load of AOE damage, so and healing, so it would heal you. Do AOE damage and immobilize. Like you could push, you could push a Rax down in like ten minutes did or they, something. They did nerf the the fire, rain of fire, whatever it's called, right? A little bit. They changed it. They made it a channeling spell and something like that. All right, holy crap, we're gonna play. Are we? Are you sure about that? Somebody just said ready. Did they? Yeah. Can't you read? The Earth Shaker. I don't see anything. Hmm. He said R D Y question mark. Thanks for waiting. You didn't write waiting now, but. My game's bugged, obviously. God. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. My last thing that's been said is freezer with question marks. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm it has something to do with me pinging. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Maybe your console messed things up. Uh, Leaf said, sorry must be very important because usually Alex hates AFK while in game. And he said something in German. And then uh, Kroki said, cat on fire, apparently. Oh, okay. That's and a then typical one. PAS said, ready. Thanks for waiting. And Dignitas comes with me and says, go. Oh, I saw that one. Interesting. It's just, whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. A couple oh, pauses, a couple resumes, and we are back in the game. Meanwhile, Earthshake is going to get stunned, which I didn't even notice was even a possibility here. Lion is taking a ton of damage, and looks like the Tornado is going to get the kill for Invoker. So, evens it up at 5-5. Five to five. Obviously, Gold Leech still in Dignitas' favor, but I can't even remember what was going on in this game. We were paused so long, bro. Yeah, I know. I hate it when that <laughs> happens. You lose your train of thought about a game, and then it's hard to analyze what. I'm wrong, thinking but... about new heroes. I want Phantom Lancer. <laughs> yeah, that that is on my list. Uh, yes, Smoke to see popped for Lich and the uh, Rasta. They're coming for a gank on the bot lane. Looking really good for them. Are they going to get the nuke off? There's the hex. There is the wards as well, and the shackle. And that's it for Leaf. Oh, Ooh, that was, was risky there. Epic. Oof. Oh yeah, he stopped doing the yeah. shackle to do a nuke, didn't he? Yeah, Dang, that was dude. very risky. Uh, the wards obviously not going to be placed to take down this tower, but. Ion Shell might be enough to push down the lanes as well as, as, well as the Shock, so it's going to be an, looks like it to be an easy tier 1, but that might be a trade as mid lane looks like they're going to take down this tower as a result, so a little bit of trade action going for tower pushes. Yeah, those very nicely done by uh, the Dire team there. I don't even know, they might even pop smoke within Observer Ward range, because they, they went up on the high ground by the Rosh Pit, popped the smoke, you might have been able to see it. Uh, <laughs> in this ward position at least, but they didn't see it coming. They're going to be swinging towards Anti-Mage now. He's up to 1700 gold. He's got two levels in both Blink and Shackle, and here's the invisibility on the Invoker. They will spot him, but he just keeps running past, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't think he was close enough for his team to actually be able to help. But mm -hmm. a little harassment wouldn't have been too bad. I mean, at this point, obviously, I am not... Even back in the day when I was into Dota 1, I was not not an Invoker player because he essentially scares me. He, he intimidates me quite a bit, which I'm sure... I, a lot of people are in the same boat as me. Uh, how powerful is EMP right now? Like, uh, which one is it? Is it his Wex or his Exhort? That or not Exhort? Just hover, or hover over the uh, the ability icon, and it'll show you how it scales. Oh, okay, so he's actually pretty high up there for now. Yep, and since we and since EMP is just a Wex ability, that means it's only dependent on how high your Wex is. Tornado, for example, it shows you Quas bonus damage, Wex oh, bonus yeah. damage, and the distance is just based on Wex. This is kind of stuff that you have to know. The lift time is based on Quas. Very cool. As it looks like we might have initiation here yet again on Faceless Void. They're not going to have an ultimate from Rasta this time. Nice Tornado EMP combination with the Void ultimate. That's going to be a kill on Lich at the very least. AA ult's going to fly. It's not going to hit, I don't believe. Lich is going to die, though. And, ooh, Surge is going to be using it at a very nice time. Sheep, along with Shadow Shaman, is going to try to get away with absolutely no mana to boot now. Can they chase? He's going to TP out in the middle of the forest here. Looks like he's going to get ooh. away. Very nice play. It could have been a lot worse for Dignitas there. That was a really good juke by the uh, the Rasta there. He was <coughs> he was definitely gonna die um, if he did not uh, pull that juke off. And during the middle of that team fight, I mean, Anti Mage blinked on the top lane, jumped on the Earth Shaker. That's why the Ancient Apparition ulti was a little bit late. So, but it yeah, ended see. up working out very good for Panzer because I don't think the Earth Shaker died at least. Um, faceless, but no, Earth Shaker absolutely lived, and they got the kill on the Lich at least. Could have possibly gotten a double kill there, but like we said, a uh, very, very good juke by the Ross to keep himself alive. So we see a little bit of potential here for team fight. Obviously, we've been talking about it pregame and whatnot, as Tornado's going to hit here with the AAL. 
Oh, it's barely not going to hit her, actually. N needs to overextend that just a little bit more. But uh, I'm looking forward to the team fights for, for Panzer because I think they definitely have the advantage in that sort. But, of course, you have a little bit on the other side as well. I mean, like a, a vacuum into a Lich ult is pretty dirty. Of course, mm -hmm. the illusions might take a little bit of that damage. But, uh, but hey, you're not going to complain too much. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, the, wait, which illusions are you talking about taking the Lich damage? Dark Seer. Well, his Chain Frost wouldn't hit them then. Oh, that's true. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. If, I guess, Void gets a Manta, that, uh, whatever. Yeah, that was complete horrible train of thought. That's true. That's okay. Uh, Lion going to the bot lane with the Smoke of Deceit, following the Shadow Shaman as well. They want to get another kill on Leaf. Mm -hmm. They do have the Shadow Shaman awards ready to go, and does Lion have his ulti? Any of this could get backtracked, though. We'll see how it ends up turning out. Uh, Lion not quite level 7, about to hit their Leaf is now backing up. Fearing something is wrong, and he's going to teleport to the top lane. Wow, that is just really lucky. Leaf was like, oh, top lane is totally farmable. Let's leave the lane. <laughs> well, he felt something in his nutsack. I get that from time to time as well. They tell me it's cancer, but I don't believe that to be true. Chronosphere, is he going to use it here is the question. Oh, nice time lock. Uh, oh, he's going to leap in. He's going to use his ult and doesn't have enough mana. He's going to pop the... the. Oh, actually, very nice play here. Is AAL going to hit? That is the question. He's going to shatter one way or another, I do believe. Oh, my God, is he? Is he? Oh my god, he's going to live. That is very close. That is live. extremely close. Wow. wow that, was, that, was, that was actually like that's about 10 as damage as away from dying. That's pretty crazy. But that spell shield. I mean, that, yeah, the spell shield for the win, basically. I mean, that, I can't believe that Kroki didn't use his cold snap earlier, though. Like, even, you know, the first time he blinked, could he use cold snap there? Just had the EMP tornado toggled up. I don't really agree with that decision making there. I, I really think that an earlier cold snap would have been pretty effective in keeping him chain stunned, but. Leaf now pushing the top lane. He doesn't have an ulti. They used it and it didn't even get a kill. There's another cold snap on the anti mage. He doesn't get the blink away. Here comes the ulti from the Lich, though, doing a ton of damage. Leaf in a lot of trouble. He's out of mana here. Most likely going to die. And wow, the vacuum AoE. That was huge. Invoker in some trouble now. He's going to run out of mana as well. But he does get the ghost walk off just barely in time. And the, the sentry is dropped, but he runs out of range. One more sentry to come, and that's going to be a kill, I think. Unlikely to survive this. No, he runs back into the corner. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Vacuum. Oh! So close. Beautiful. Wow. Good save there. Save as in kill. Beautifully played as now Anti-Mage gets a triple kill. That's definitely not who you want to get the triple kill if you're in Panzer's shoes right now. As uh, Wow, Lion's actually going to destroy Venomancer in the mid lane with help from, from the Darkseer. So a little bit, of, a little bit of a kill there. But yeah, Anti-Mage, what does he have? 900 gold right now. Doesn't have anything to stash. So he's definitely going towards a, a battle here with that Perseverance. So... Still got a ways to go, but once he gets it, like we've talked about, he's going to completely take off. Now, Void, on the other hand, just to give a little other side of the story, is definitely going for a Battle Fury as well. It's about halfway there. So, actually, they're about they're going to get it around the same time. That is not good for Void, considering Anti-Mage has Vanguard as well. Yeah, that's definitely true. Not a good situation for them. They wasted all of those abilities trying to kill the Anti-Mage, but it just never really worked out. Maybe like getting the A ulti on the uh, Anti-Mage while the Chronosphere up was up would have made a big difference, but they weren't able to score that EMP Tornado. No, just going to shoot a Tornado through the middle uh, by Kuroki there. He did actually have the abilities, but didn't spend the mana. And he does pick up a Point Booster immediately, which means he's probably going to try to get a really fast Egg and Scepter here. And that will help out against that Anti-Mage, because Anti-Mage will be getting a Battle Fury next. And then immediately after that, he's probably going to want a Manta style. But Kuroki might be able to get the Aghanim Scepter in time for that, which is uh, promising for Panzer. What do you think about Aghanim Scepter on, on Invoker? It's amazing. <laughs> it what is it? It lowers the cooldown of his ultimate to two seconds, right? Uh, at level four, yes. And um, it makes it so the Invoke mana cost is non-existent. That's very nice. So it, I mean, it saves a little bit of mana, which means you can cast more. But more importantly, you can spam more spells. It's, I don't know, you'll have to try it out sometime. It's, you, you don't appreciate how good it is until you finally pick it up. I'm and too it does scared. Give him, I'm too scared. It does give him the stuff he needs, the stats, man. Uh, it gives him HP, gives him mana, gives him attack speed, gives him a little bit of damage. That's All right. these things work out really nicely. Yeah, a lot of people picking up Aghanim Sever doesn't necessarily mean that the ultimate's going to be, like, for example, this is a kind of a bad example, but Zeus picking it up, it doesn't necessarily make his ultimate that much better. It's actually pretty terrible, to be honest, for that fact. But the stats are so freaking good. I mean, the point mm -hmm. booster along with the uh, Ogre Club, I think it's called now, mm -hmm. is just freaking amazing for survivability. So definitely can't... Ooh, actually, Lich is going to get caught up here. Nice EMP combination with the AA ult. That is going to be a kill. Ancient Emperor is going to get a little bit overkill, honestly. But a kill is a kill is a kill is a kill is what my mom always used to say. And I don't know why she would used to say that. It doesn't make any sense. Void is going to try to get away. Uses Ooh. the ultimate. 
Is Anti-Mage going to be able to blink and do anything? Doesn't look like it's going to be the case. So Void barely able to get out in time. As we're going to have a little bit of a fight here. Anti-Mage is going to apply some pressure to, Anti to AA. A is trying it away. <laughs> Anti-Mage is stealing everybody's mana at this point. Venom Master is going to be the one to take the brunt of the damage. But Invoker scares off the lowly Anti-Mage, unfortunately. Although it was 1v4, so can't be too shocked by that. But that Anti-Mage is really very close, close to getting, uh, getting closer and closer to that aforementioned Battle Fury, which is just going to turn this game around. Yeah, Rasta jumped on the line there. I'm sorry, jumped on the void there, trying to get a solo kill. He blinked on in, did the hex, and the uh, Mass Serpent Ward engaged with the nukes, and then finally the Shackle. But unfortunately, since he ward trapped the void in, Anti Mage couldn't get a couple hits in before uh, he ran out, and then he time walked out. He interrupted his ulti there with um, with the void ulti. Oh, I'm sorry, Anti Mage interrupted Void's ulti with his ulti, and then uh, barely survived as his teammates came in. So that was that was really close. Void definitely almost died there. As we see, Darkseer has a pipe, has arcane boots. Most likely, I would assume, if history is any indication, it's going to be going for Aghanim Scepter next, which is completely broken, like we talked about. As it looks like smoke's going to be used here by Dignitas to... Uh, whose ward is that? They're actually going to be spotted if they if they saw it with the, the sentry ward. Uh, going to be coupled here with Darkseer. And perhaps just going to push this lane, because Leaf, I, don't bel I believe he knows there's smoke down here. It's, uh, I think the way that it works is you can see it with your eyes, Not on the mini but map, there's no icons on the minimap. So if they weren't paying attention, I, they would have probably pinged otherwise. That's, That's a pretty uh, stable reaction. Oh my god, they're invisible. But they're going to go on to Leaf now, doing a bunch of damage. He's once again getting ganked. The face, oh man, the finger of death gets backtracked. Will he survive? It's going to be close. He's still alive. Oh my god. He what a spell to backtrack, I will say. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Looks like Ancient Apparition got a kill at Lich in the mid lane, so a little bit of a trade, but not very even if you're in Panzer's perspective here. They're going to try to push down this tier 2 tower. But in the meantime, I do believe, yep, bottom tower is going to take on easily to the Rost Awards. And Dignitas still with a little bit of a lead here. I'm mean, looking at the gold experience, lead, or the gold lead overall. Uh, heading towards 7,500 very closely here, so definite gold advantage, which has been pretty consistent in this matchup, I must say. Although this has been pretty even overall, so happy about yeah. that at least. Yeah, Leaf on the uh, Faceless Void, not able to get nearly as many kills as the uh, AM is. They're going to get a Tornado off on the line. With the, wow, he's absolutely screwed there. Cold Snap with the Ice Vortex. So much damage done. Good coordination. And they get that kill at least. Not able to take the mid tower, though. And uh, could be doing better, though. Faceless Void has died three times. Anti-Mage has four kills. And that's literally the difference in this game so far, is that Anti-Mage is farmed and on his way to his next items. And Void still hasn't gotten his Battle Fury. Yeah, that's going to be the one to look at here. Darkseer is taking a lot of initiation power here. AA ult, Venno ult, everyone's ult, except for Earthshaker, of course, because he didn't really need it. That's going to be a kill on Darkseer. And here's a blinking from Anti-Mage. going to apply a little bit of chip damage to Tidehunter, or not Tidehunter, Earthshaker. And looks like that's actually going to scare everybody away. It's actually Ross is going to sheep Ancient Apparition. Ancient Apparition is in a lot of trouble. Ultim from Anti-Mage is going to get the kill. And looks like they're going to be happy with that trade. <laughs> one for one overall, I guess, in the end. But, uh, but yeah. Anti-Mage with the Battle Fury, pre uh, around the 20 minute mark with the Vanguard and, and, and Treads is pretty freaking good, not going to lie. Void mm -hmm. still not really that close. So as far as late game potential, it's not even close at this point. Not even close. Yep, uh, Anti-Mage basically has a entire Battle Fury plus Vitality Booster up on uh, the Faceless Void. Uh, well, I guess minus the Claymore, so... Battle Fury minus Claymore and a Vitality Booster up on Void. He's, he's literally got a lot of gold uh, and an advantage. The wards get dropped as well. Uh, is that a level 2 ward? Uh, yeah, level 2 ward going down, but that's going to be an easy tower hit. The Glyph does get popped, and Void oh. is going to initiate. He's going on the roster, but he does get stunned there. No blocking bar or anything. Well, the Gale will land as well. The Tornado coming through, and that's going to keep Leaf alive there. Very good time for that Tornado. Oh! Lich not able to chain frost his mana gets drained there now going after the anti-mage just the first one Are we gonna see him actually go down? It's gonna be close. He does get low, but he blinks away Man the anti-mage blinks so nasty, but no oh. Leaf is going after him. He gets the kill I can't believe it now chasing after the squishy heroes going to the dark seer But the finger of death does not get backtracked this time and faceless void does get picked off But still chasing after him. Are we gonna see some cold snaps out of Kroki? He does get hexed and I think Kroki will now back off He's gonna place an EMP to boot here <laughs> and that means Darkstar has absolutely no mana. Anti-Mage did buy out, and wait, where is he? Farming. He's he just farming. So anytime you have a battle, you're like, you know what? I don't Tough. feel like waiting 30 seconds or however long it is. I'm just going to buy out and farm my gold and get a little bit of experience to boot. So not the worst decision overall. But I think that kind of backed up Panzer to some degree. The AL is going to miss on the, on the lion at 
bottom lane, but yeah, this is not looking good late game. I will say that Invoker does pick up his Aghanim Aghanim Scepter. Let's actually go over the complete item set here. Uh, Aghanim Scepter on him, along with Phase Boost, like you were talking about. Mechanism on Ancient Apparition, and that's pr actually really the only things picked up here for for Panzer. Well, Kroki does have the Ega man. Yeah, that's his his ulti. His cooldown now is I think around five seconds for cooldown. That means he's gonna be able to cast five, six spells in a team fight over the course of 20 seconds or something like that. You know, two spells immediately, invoke, cast that spell, wait five seconds, invoke a new spell, wait, wait five seconds, cast a new spell, and once he does get to 17, I believe that's the next level, um, yeah, don't quite so. remember. 17, then he gets a level 4 ulti, and then he's going to be casting like crazy. From here on out, I'm probably going gonna, gonna to expect him to get maybe a Yule Scepter so that he can keep Anti-Mage in the air during the team fights. but other than that, uh, Anti-Mage has got to be careful. Yeah, if you're in Panzer's perspective, you're still a little bit down, obviously, just because Anti-Mage is going to be the hard late game carry that you've always wanted in Void, but it's not going to happen, at least not yet. But I think they really need to get their coordination down. They need to get good initiations, because they definitely have a better team fight team, as far as ultimates mm -hmm. go. And if they actually get it down, I mean, 25, we didn't even mention 25% magic reduction coming from something like an AA on top of everything else is just disgusting. In the meantime, Rasta is able to get his wards off. Actually, a nice... Cock block on the faceless void, and he's gonna get vacuumed in along with the Lich. All a lot of damage coming out here. Kuroki's gonna try to get away with Invoker. AA's probably gonna get killed. Pops his magic wand, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. Actually, Ultima is already used by Anti Mage. Looks like Venomaster did get the kill on Shadow Shaman on another, another side there, but Anti Mage is gonna continue to chase down this AA's. Dark Seer gets a kill on Venomaster. All we care about is Anti Mage, though. All I care about is Anti Mage, at least. Is he's gonna run into his friend in Lich, and three for one exchange. The initiation was decent to start off on Rasta, but. Rasta did get off the amazing trap on the Void, and that basically set them up for a great team fight. Yeah, and the Chain Frost as well. It was literally the Rasta trap, as well as the Chain Frost coming out, doing a ton of damage to the Void. I like what uh, Panzer is trying to do right now. They're trying to go all in with their heroes. They know that their farm on the Void is way behind on the Invoker because he's been getting ganked too much. So they said, all right, we got to push five and try to take towers because our farm's obviously not working. Let's see if we can do this. They're going to pick off the... Uh, the Lich, possibly going to get the Darkseer as well. Here comes a TP support. The Cold Snap is on the Darkseer, so he's extremely slow. But he will get picked off by Tower alone. Void coming through. Going to be nailing on Come With Me. And there's the uh, Deafening Blast. No attacks coming from him. But all he's going to try to do is survive at this point. The Wall of Replica. No, it's actually an Ice Wall coming out. Is oh! this not going to happen? Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's why he ran into the trees, man. He wanted to line them up. Yeah. I guess so. In the meantime, Antimage is farming. What does he have on the chicken here? He has a Yasha, so going to go for a Manta style. And farming very well to boot. Faceless Void in the meantime. Ugh. Okay, he's finished with his Perseverance. One step closer to that Battle Fury, the 30-minute Battle Fury, which definitely is not a good time to get it. Uh, honestly, normally I'd say this game is over, but because of their team fight potential, they can always come back in this game. It's not always like when you have somebody like an Enigma in the game. It's always potential for a comeback with a couple good team fights, and they definitely have that capability with the Faceless Void, who definitely needs a lot of farm here, getting very close, about 300 away from finally getting that Battle Fury. And hopefully they can actually do something with that. But uh, it's going to be an uphill battle, no doubt about it, as Anti-Mage is going to continue, continue to farm the crap out of the creeps. Yeah, that's definitely true. Faceless Void will teleport to the bot lane. So he's going to get some free farm down there. He's had that Claymore a long time. Yeah. It's been sitting on a stash. I wish he just would have dropped his Quelling Blade and picked up that Claymore a long time ago. Uh, at the least, he would be hitting heroes for an extra 21 damage. Uh, but not a big deal. He's got 100 gold left. And then he will have his battle for your two last hits, and finally he's going to be doing decent damage in teamfights. But he needs to get the big Chronospheres off. They have to try to pick off that Rasta. I think if they can kill the Rasta and the line, the team fight is over, because that's most of their disables. I mean, Anti-Mage is still going to be doing a lot of damage and things, but we did see him die previously, and that's because he took a lot of nukes. But Dignitas is looking to take their, uh, their Roshan. Indeed, Rasta Wards are actually going to be used for this too, and doesn't look like Panzers can do anything about it. As we're going to see Forge Spirit being, that is the worst model in the entire game, by the way. I don't know if you agree. The worst model in the game. Yeah, it needs just some work. with me. It's yellow body, doesn't really blend well with his shoulders. <laughs> yeah, he just looks downsy. Creepy. Really. Like, I don't know, there's no better word for it than downsy. So Anti-Mage, I'm assuming he's picked up me the Aegis. Yes, he does. Has 1600 gold as well. Most likely uh, just waiting to get the finished Manta style at this point. But if you're in Dignitas' shoes right now, are you fine? Are you content with Anti-Mage just completely taking this game over with farm? And not really um, necessarily forcing team fights at this point. 
I, I would be happy if I was in Digging Toss's position. They have a 10k gold advantage, which is a crap load. That's going to win them team fights alone, I think. Um, but I would probably just keep farming for them. They know they're anti mages ahead. They don't really want to try to commit team fights because there's a possibility they can lose. Because obviously, Kuroki does have that Agatum Scepter and the Earthshaker AA Void. Like, it's a lot of team fight AoE, like we talked about. So, yeah. if they have a bad initiation, they still could lose their team fights, and that could push the farm into Void's favor. That's the only way that the raiding team is going to come back is by winning team fights. So, I guess it's technically better for them to just keep farming. Yeah, that's definitely a good point to make there. As Anti Mage is level 18, just to give you a little discrepancy here. Faceless Void level 14, Anti Mage level 18, as he's going to get completely mana drained. Well, I shouldn't say completely, he still has enough to blink. Um, and obviously, what does that do? 400 mana burn, I believe, right? At the highest level? If Wex is maxed, yes. Right, so that's basically, what is it, half his mana at this point? Oh, actually, three fourths of his mana. So if he uses his ultimate or a little, some, if he's not full on mana, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. But yeah, it, it definitely can make a big impact. We haven't seen it come into effect yet, really, as of yet, though, which is surprising. The EMP? Yeah. Or I mean, draining? Well, for anti-mage, specifically. Yeah, because you really do have to drain everything he has. I mean, you can limit his blinks to only a couple of teamfights, or maybe he can't ulti in a teamfight, but picking off a hero like Lion with EMP is huge. Draining 400 of his mana, that means he's not going to be able to ulti in a teamfight, just do something like a stun hex. There's a Fissure oh. We see the Chronosphere. They're going on him, man. The Gale coming as well. The Chain Frost going to do some decent damage. Leaf actually going to back up here because he's worried Venomancer ulti will go down. That Chain Frost did a lot of damage with the EMP finally landing through, and anti is not sitting too well, 120 mana. He's thinking about initiating, he's gonna go and he's got his Manta style finished, and that was a huge mistake there, he's gonna get picked off most likely, his Aegis will be dropped, he's stunned, oh my god, somebody hit him twice. <laughs> he's gonna Indeed. survive. And Void dies instead. <laughs> Wow. Void dies instead of anti mage. At this point, like, don't even bother wasting the Aegis. I guess if you can get a tower out of it, maybe. But as we're gonna have a blink in here from Shadow Shaman, along with anti mage using his his Manta style, newly picked up, of course. Shadow Shaman does die as a result, though. So a little bit overextension here, perhaps from from Dignitas. Is, well, there's the ultimate from Finger of Death. The finger in the anus of Earthshaker is gonna get the kill. Earthshaker didn't even get his ult off. Could have used it there to perhaps get a kill on anti mage. But of course, anti mage is still. Pretty tanky, even with that low of life. Dodges the AA ult, very nicely done. And looks like they're going to perhaps get a tower here. Nice stun there from Lion getting both AA and Invoker. And that is going to be a double kill of sorts. Lion going to get the first kill. Anti Mage going to clean up on the second one. Still has the Aegis, mind you. That is a team wipe. So it wasn't really a team fight, like one consistent team fight. Just a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of kiting ability from Anti Mage, kind of baiting things out with that low of health. And they're still not able to kill him. Yeah, I think this game is over, man. Uh, Anti-Mage too hard to gank, faces Void easier to gank. Not easy to gank, but easier here. Uh, yeah. Come with me, surprisingly, picking up some levels of Mana Drain, something we almost never see on a Lion. But um, it's going to allow him to cast more spells, and probably not a bad decision against uh, a uh, Invoker. Actually, that's a good point to bring up. I haven't seen Mana Drain on Lion in quite a while. Uh, I, I do remember back in the day when he was a, a solo hero, which this is way back in the day, but you'd pick up Impale, which is that even called Impale anymore? It's Earth Spike. spike. Earth, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, impale and uh, Mana Drain, and not get any in, in your hex for solo situations. Used to be r ridiculous. Actually, he was arguably the best solo in the entire game back in the day. But yeah, he's he's still really strong, but he's easy to get ganked. Is the problem? Yeah, very true. Um, yeah, the, I mean the the Mana Drain build is really good for your solo situation for a couple minutes because at that point it's like okay, I can spam Earth Spike or Impale on my enemy. But when you come into a ganking situation, you go to gank another lane, Mana Drain is completely worthless as a skill point. Because if you use Mana Drain, you're standing still. You can't do like a an Earth Spike Hex and get a double kill. You're going to get tops one kill kind of a situation. So um, it does give you that, that little timing window where your solo lane is really effective. But after that point in the game, it's really not that great to have uh, Mana Drain. At this point, I agree with it this game because of the EMP. But if it wasn't for EMP, I would uh, question it a little bit. Going a little bit of item progression here as Aghanim Scepter is now complete on Darkshade, which means team fights are going to be impossible to cast, so I look forward to that. Uh, Four Staff Online, which I'm sure he's had quite a while. Obviously, we saw the blink a long time ago from Rasta, but he's going to add a BKB into the mix as well. A mechanism on Lich as well. Anti Mage, like, oh, he did pick up an Eagle Song, which is not called an Eagle Horn anymore, which is truly unfortunate. Eagle Song, not quite as ringy to the ear, I guess. But he's going to go mm -hmm. for a Butterfly here. It still has the Aegis. Which I'm assuming he's going to pop in the next couple of minutes. I wish I had a timer, at least for the spectators, so we could see. As they're going to use Aghanim Scepter Ultimate from Darkseer. Actually, a nice EMP combination there. Tornado combination from Invoker. Going to kill a lot of the illusions, but 
Anti-Mage just yeah. doesn't care at this point. Yeah, it does burn a lot of its mana. It's about half gone now. They're going to probably wait for another EMP before they have a team fight. There's the Serpent Wards going down. There are illusions everywhere. The Ice Vortex as well is going to scare them, possibly. Oh. And Earthshaker going in. He's going to blink in, get a big Echo Slam, but it doesn't really do much damage. I believe they had a uh, hype up, and now Anti-Mage going to pick off the Venomancer as uh, the leaf, leaf on the Void does initiate on all the heroes, but... It's just not much he can do about him, man. His damage is not nearly where it should be. Yeah. Chaos Meteors can come forward. That's doing virtually no yeah. damage. There's another vacuum and more auto attacking. A good tornado on the anti mage, but at this point, this game is over, man. What level is the Chaos Meter? Is that doing any damage? Is that Exhort? No. One of the main ones? Yeah, yeah so that did nothing. You need Exhort to get the damage, and he only has one level. That looks like he's going to pay the price for his insolence of using a level 1 chaos meter and doing nothing with it. Will die. And looks like they're just going to focus on this bottom tide. They don't even care about the mid anymore, as mid's basically dead as well.